All right, the time has come to finally finish a project that has been in the works for over a year, and so many of you are so excited about it, and that is Cinderella's work dress, maid dress, scullery maid dress, whatever you want to call it. I haven't found a good name that I'm just like good with. I usually call it the work dress, but anyway, it's the one that she wears in most of the film and is just so beautiful and pretty. And over the last year, I have gone from creating the chemise, petticoats, finding the right fabric, and then dyeing it the right color. And then I went on a very long process of printing the design that's on the original dress onto my fabric. I did this using the screen printing method and you can find a tutorial for screen printing on my channel, as well as a video about actually printing all the design and repeat flowers onto the fabric. Also, the pattern for this full dress will be available on my website and the chemise and petticoat patterns, that's all on my website and link in description and should pop up. So, I got all that done uh, probably two months ago and I've been just waiting for a time to finally get in here and start sewing the bodice and the skirt and I'm taking you all along with me as usual and by the end of this video, you will see the completed work dress that so many of you have been wanting to see. Since the outer fabric is sheer, there's an under fabric used in the skirt and bodice, and it's dyed a similar blue color. The first thing I'm actually going to do is the hems of the two skirt layers. So I know this seems a bit out of order, but because the border is already printed on the skirt, and the skirt is going to have a straight grain hem, there's nothing holding me back from doing this step first. And I might just not wanted to figure out the pleating yet. So with the hems finished, now I've got to go tackle the pleating. So first of all, the testing. So I got both fabrics cut at 12 inches long and then I'll pleat it up and see what the finished measurement is. So when making the petticoats for this dress, I noticed that my smocking machine, which creates nice even cartridge pleats, doesn't handle multiple layers of fabric very well. And I just had some frustrating moments with breaking threads and needles. So to eliminate that hassle, I've decided to just hand do all the cartridge pleats. Yes, I did. I really am. The first test was with quarter inch stitches, which creates quarter inch pleats, and this made 12 inches of fabric measure two inches. Based on my four yard skirt, this would mean I would end up with a 24 inch waist to the skirt, which is just a bit too small. But with cartridge pleats, as with gathering, it depends on how tightly you pull the threads and compact the pleats, which affect this final measurement. So with just easing up a bit on the threads, we can get the waist to measure correctly. But the truth is, I honestly just didn't like the look of these pleats. They're just too chunky looking compared to the original ones, which are very fine. So I did a few more tests and I decided that eighth inch pleats looked the best and leaving the under fabric out of these pleats and just doing the outer fabric created very fine pleats. So that's what I'm moving forward in doing. We'll see if this actually works. A unique aspect to making this outer skirt is going to be the fact that the bottom part of the front of the bodice dips down at the waist. Now, with cartridge pleats, you usually just take a straight edge and you fold it over and create your pleats on that folded edge. And then you just attach that folded edge to your bodice. But if I just did that the basic way, and followed the curve of the bodice, that dipped part of the skirt is going to be longer. And I'm not going to trim the hem straight because that would make the bottom edge of the hem crooked against the grain. So you'd have a straight edge hem and then at the dip, it'd be trimmed off where it's longer and now you've got this wonky edge going on with the grain line. So that just is not optimal. The way to get that dip in the skirt and the bodice without making the hem uneven, I'll have to trim that dip 
into the skirt. And so when it's attached, it doesn't make the hem longer. Now that seems like a simple fix, but the thing is I'm pleating this all up. And so I'll have to calculate what type of curve this edge of fabric needs to have to fit the curve of the bodice once this is gathered up. So the dip spans over about 12 inches on the bodice and it dips down about three inches. So I'm lengthening the dip compared to my mock-up and that's why it doesn't match. But anyway, so based on my pleats, I can trim this point across the front two yards of the skirt. So a yard on each side of the center front. So I'm just gradually going down to three inches at that center front point. So now this whole top edge is folded over. Having cut that curve made it slightly more difficult to fold over this edge smoothly, but with a little steam, it laid flat. Now there's a whole bunch of lines to draw so that I can create even stitches. I'm using a chalk pencil and I'm first drawing horizontal stitch lines and I'm going to do four rows of stitches and then I'm making vertical lines half inch apart. These will guide my stitch lengths. So I'll be fitting four stitches within each of these spaces. Along the way, I wasn't quite liking how wide this pleating was, so I ended up taking out that lower thread, so now I only have three rows of stitches. Once it was all gathered up, I made sure the very top measured the correct waist measurement, but then also made sure that the lowest thread was slightly looser so that I would fit around my hips and flare out from the waist. Just kidding. This was all taken out it just wasn't looking great. Because it was just the outer fabric being gathered up, which is fine, the pleats just ended up wrinkling weird. So they were finer than when I had the other fabric in the pleats, but they aren't smooth. They just got that weird wrinkly look. So out it all came. So moving on, this time I added the under fabric to the pleats, but without folding it over. So it's just one layer of the thicker under fabric and two layers of the outer fine fabric. So it helped make the pleats a little bit finer, but it still gave enough stability to keep the pleats smooth. And I did this, but I just didn't film it. So onto the bodice. It'll be made of three layers of fabric, the outer fabric, the under fabric, and then an interlining. So I have plenty of the thicker under fabric, so I'll be making the interlining the same fabric. For the outer fabric, I decided to not print the flowers until after I've cut out the pattern. So I figured this would save time from having to print a bunch of repeats of the flowers on the yardage and everything. So instead I can just cut out the pattern and print the exact prints that I need on each pattern piece. And I can also eliminate any pattern matching stuff. But since setting the dye in the fabric involves water, I just am quickly cutting out the pieces with plenty of extra room in case the fabric shrinks or distorts or anything.
now the pieces are lined up and the extra fabric trimmed away and we've got good pattern matched pieces. On the inner lining, I'm first placing my boning channels and a few of them are placed here and then there's going to be a few placed just on the seams so those won't be placed until I sew the seams. So now we need to baste all three of these layers together before we can attach the whole bodice together. So the front section is a rectangle piece of fabric with the neckline cut out and the lower section is smocked. And since this is fine fabric, I found that it's too fine to just be one layer of it. So I cut a second layer to place just where the smocking will be. I basted it along the edges, but I also added some vertical lines along the piece to make sure no odd wrinkling happens between the layers. So for smocking it evenly, I found a cardboard tube from wrapping paper and rolled the section up on it. And this will hopefully evenly feed the fabric into the smocker. Now there are 14 threads to tie off so that the smocking stays put. To do this, I backstitched the thread for about three pleats and then pulled it to the back of the smocking. And now at the back of those three pleats, I just did a couple knots. For the second side, I not only needed to tie the threads, but I also need to make sure it has the correct loosening of the pleats as it goes up the front. And then for extra security, I didn't actually trim the thread ends on all the smocking. Instead, I just fed about an inch or so of the thread inside the back of the pleats and then trimmed them. The front piece is now ready to attach to the under fabric and interlining. Well, almost. I'm first going to insert the boning into that interlining. The boning being in there for this next step will be really helpful. So you'll notice on the original dress that there's an angle to the flowers in the smocking. So there's either a seam at center front and the pieces are cut on angle and that creates the angle of those flowers. Or there's this other option, which I think is the correct thing of what's happening because not only are the flowers angled, but the smocking lines are also angled. So I'm going to create this angling by simply pulling the center part of the smocking down to match the point of the bodice. So I know I'm kind of doing a no-no and pulling my fabric and distorting the grain line to create this point, but I honestly think that's what's happening. So then the extra fabric at the neckline is arranged and everything is basted together and the extra fabric is trimmed away. Now the bodice can be sewn together. On just the seam allowance of the side and back side seam, a piece of twill tape is attached to create a boning channel. Now for the tricky seam right next to the smocking. So the trick for this one is to get the pin as close as possible to the smocking, and then when sewing, keep that pin there and press it into the crevice. That pin will make a smooth path for the needle of the machine to go into and get as close to the smocking as possible. And then I found it looked best to press both seam allowances in under the smocking instead of pressing open. 
So I trimmed the seams down, pressed them that way, and then catch stitched them in place. And I also did this for the other pressed open seams. For the sleeves, it's just the sheer fabric, and I decided to do French seams, leaving about three inches unsewn at the hem to create a vent. And then I went ahead and hand sewed the hems and vent. For the unique detail at the top of the sleeve, you might remember me mentioning that it looks like a shiny thread. Well, I found some slightly shiny thread, and I'm using this to smock the top. I'm using the smocking machine again, but this time spacing the threads about 3 16 inches apart. And this smocking is just done at the top three or so inches of the sleeve. And now there's more threads to tie off, like 60 ends. So four hours later, not really, but it took a long time. Sleeves are done, and before we can attach the sleeve, there's some piping to make. So this goes along the neckline, armholes, and waist. There's something else to make, and that's the ruffle for the neckline. This was just a piece of fabric, which I did a rolled hem on with the machine, and then I trimmed it down to one and a quarter inches wide, and then gathered it on the machine. So at the neckline, on goes the piping, and then the ruffle. The piping then gets attached to the armhole and waist, and then the sleeves attached, and then it all gets torn out. Not the entire bodice, but all the piping work that I just did. I was just not happy with it. It's The piping was just so obvious and stark and too large compared to the original, which is just like hardly noticeable. So out it all came, and I remade the piping using a lighter pink fabric and no cord in the middle. So it's just a super fine piping, and the result was so much better. For the back closure, I made a placket, which is extra long because it will continue down the skirt. For the other side of the closure, the edge is just folded under with a slight overlap to the other edge. And then I hand stitch with as invisible as possible stitches to keep this fold in place, but also to create a channel for a piece of boning to go into. We're getting close, don't worry. <laughs> the armhole and the waist seams are then trimmed down and catch stitched in place, and then thread bars and hooks are attached to the back closure. Now is finally time to get the skirt attached. So with cartridge pleats, just one side of the pleats are attached to the bodice edge. So you go through the top outer edge of the pleat and then stitch through the bodice. Each individual pleat is sewn to the bodice. Well, sometimes you don't have to do every single pleat, but I chose to, in this case, just to make sure everything is secure. And I just like the idea of every little pleat being attached. But anyway, I'm using a buttonhole thread for this to make sure it's nice and strong. So the piping along this edge does make it a little bit tricky because you don't wanna catch it in the stitch because then you're hiding the piping. So I just tried to keep the piping poking down and then I grabbed the bodice at the stitch line of the piping and that worked really well. So just making sure the needle was going into the stitch line and not into the actual piping.
And then the last thing is finishing up the back closure with the placket and then some hooks and eyes continuing down the skirt. Now into the wash it goes. Don't scream, it's fine. <laughs> After trying it on, I just felt like the overall dress was too stiff feeling. It just needs some breaking in, but I wasn't really gonna wear it like for a long time. So I just decided to throw it in the wash and it'll be grand. And I also added a little fabric softener to maybe help. And also everything was washed beforehand. So I didn't have any fear of it bleeding or shrinking or anything. But anyway, out it came. And without further ado, the finished Cinderella work dress. a minute to talk about shoes. So shoes are very important to the Cinderella storyline, but no one really talks about the shoes that she just always wears in everyday life that need to be resistant to water and ash and dirt and all that. So I am so happy to have Vivaya sponsor this video. They have designed shoes that are not only elegant and comfortable, but are also made of recycled material. So, so far they have recycled two and a half million plastic water bottles into sustainable, fashionable footwear. And they use a 3D knit technology, which reduces their waste by 30%. They've recently released a shoe called the Aria 5 Degree Free and they are the perfect flats for everyday use. Not only are they pretty, but they repel water and dirt and oil with their nano level protection, which is a combination of increased surface tension with the lotus leaf effect, creating self-cleaning properties, and a nano level fluff on the surface, which forms a water protective layer. But even with this, they're still breathable and comfortable with shock absorbing sole and soft herbal insole. So they really are the perfect Cinderella shoes. Water repellent, easy to clean and comfortable for everyday use. So be sure to check out Vivaya and their many sustainable footwear options on their website. And you can get 15% off using the code BMA15. Thanks again, Vivaya, for sponsoring this video and what a perfect video it was to sponsor. It's finished, which is like so exciting. And honestly, it was, this was one of those projects where you're wondering when you're actually gonna get it finished because there's just so much delay on things and then just so much trying to figure out different aspects of it. But anyway, it's finished. It's been over a year in the making of this from the chemise and petticoats to printing the fabric, dyeing the fabric, and then now the completed dress. There is still the accessories to make, so the two aprons, but other than that, I am pretty much ready to do the photo shoot. That's already in the plan. It's finally here, it's done. Yay! Anyway, thanks for watching along this very long drawn out process of making this costume, but I hope you enjoyed. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons and YouTube members who are 
with me along this entire process, this whole one year process of making this dress. And as I mentioned earlier, you can find the pattern for this dress on my website. And there will definitely be a fun, beautiful, finished video shoot coming out on the channel soon, so stay tuned. And as always, go out there and learn, create, and inspire.